Could what we eat be the difference between life and death? Between a light fever or a stay in intensive care? We know that obesity can lead to severe COVID-19 complications, as can high blood pressure or diabetes. So is our diet our destiny? Could eating fewer animals and more plants be the solution? A new study suggests it could come down to survival of the vegetarians. Hello and welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones and I am a vegetarian. It's true. Been one for more than 30 years, even though my family then insisted that it's important to eat meat. A common notion in those days. So, now there is a study that says vegetarians could be in better shape to deal with a COVID-19 infection. Let's find out why. The idea that diet has a role in preventing disease has been around for decades as has the dictum to eat a range of foods, including fruit and vegetables. Today, the outcome of a COVID-19 infection appears to be the latest in a string of ways in which vegetarians may fare better in terms of health. A recent US study published in one of the British Medical Journal's publications looked at how being predominantly vegetarian impacted the severity of a COVID infection. People who mostly followed a plant-based diet were found to be 73% less likely to develop a moderate to severe case of COVID if they did get infected. That's compared to those who ate a high-protein, low-carbohydrate diet. It's sort of embedded in a huge discussion of how does diet help. The big problem here is how do we find this out? And, and it, this is a interesting study because they use a population which is likely to to be infected with COVID and, and likely to be exposed to COVID. So, so that that is really interesting. The participants in the study were frontline healthcare workers in France, Germany, Italy, Spain, the US and the UK. More than 2,000 doctors and nurses were asked to record what they ate, whether or not they got COVID and if they did, how long and severe their illness was. Those who follow predominantly plant-based diets were much less likely to get seriously ill if they became infected, even when age and exercise habits were taken into account. But what we eat also reflects who we are more broadly. In Western countries, vegetarians are also more likely to be well-educated, health-conscious and female. These factors all have a bearing on the outcome of a COVID infection. For my nutritional point of view is always I think it's worrying about nutrition is generally not a good idea it's it's in most cases the diet is fine if you sort of get it somewhat balanced and don't go to one extreme or the other I think that the risk to push people into eating disorders is, is often worse than than the benefit one could achieve for years there's been a debate about the relationship between lifestyle choices and disease COVID is just the latest reason to do so and it shows that a healthier diet doesn't necessarily protect against disease, but it can support immunity. And for more, I'm joined by Sheena Cruikshank. She's Professor of Biomedical Sciences and an immunologist at the University of Manchester. So very good to have you with us. And going by this report, um, I suspect that you're a vegetarian, perhaps a vegan. Actually, no, I am not a vegetarian or a vegan. I do eat a predominantly plant-based diet, though, but I do enjoy some fish and some meat as well. OK, so it's not all that bad. But diet-related health <laughs> issues, uh, they certainly have been uh, quickly recognised as a huge risk factor. What exactly happens to our immune system when our diet is not healthy? Well, it's not really surprising that diet has a, an impact on our immune system. Because if you think about it, the ability to fight infections and the ability to get nutrients from the food that we eat are really fundamental for life. So they're very, very intertwined. And we know that uh, a very typical Western diet that's high in fat, low in vegetables, can cause something called meta-inflammation. This is where your immune system gets out of balance and you have a kind of a low level inflammation, 
which surprisingly makes you less able to deal specifically with infections. So you are more vulnerable to COVID. Uh, so, I mean, it is well known that uh, our Western-style diet is uh, famously uh, unhealthy. Lots of sugar, sausages, you name it. Uh, all boosting, as you just said, our inflammatory levels, which is bad for our immune system. But why then has COVID-19 caused such havoc in countries like India, where a vegetarian diet is so much more widespread? Well, you've got to look at all the different factors that come into play there. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of poverty in India and we've got a lot of overcrowding. So that means it's very easy for the infection to spread. You may have people who are malnourished. You may have people who have other infections that make them less able to fend off the disease. And we've had issues around um, a lack of treatment resources, oxygen, etc. So there's a, a, an infrastructure issue there. So COVID's not just about having a diet, it's also about looking at the other ways you can mitigate your risks, looking at how ventilated your spaces are, looking at how much close contact you've got with people and the types of activities that you do. Right. Now, now if people uh, watching this start to panic and think, oh my God, I have not been eating healthily, I have to change that. Last year, British uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson launched an Eat Healthy campaign as part of the United Kingdom's fight against the pandemic. How long does it take to have any in effect? Any Anything you can report there already? Well, I'm not sure how, how much effect it's having in the UK broadly. I'm not aware of studies looking at that. But certainly we know that in in just sort of six weeks time, you can really see a huge impact on your immune system from changing your lifestyle. Just bringing in a bit more variety into the food that you eat, looking at how you kind of get out and about so that you're exercising a little bit more, not sitting at your computer screen all day. Those sorts of things can have a really quick effect and they're so simple to do that we can all do it. Uh it sounds very easy, but I'm just wondering, is there a one-size-fits-all healthy diet and lifestyle? I think the, the, there, there will be variation because some people are more predisposed to conditions than others. However, the very simple steps, such as looking at the variety in your diet and looking at just being a little bit more mobile. I'm not talking extreme exercise, looking at your stress levels. These are things that we can all do, and at the very least, they improve our well-being. Now, obviously, I mean, to, to, to have a healthy diet, to exercise, all of that is fairly much common knowledge, and certainly in parts of the world where people can actually afford to have a, a healthy life uh, style, uh, they still don't all do it. I mean... If this pandemic doesn't make us change our habits, what will? Well, I, I, I think that we have actually seen some positive steps into changing our habits because we've seen a lot of people, now that they were forced to stay indoors, they really sought the times that they could go outside and they've been exploring their neighbourhoods. They've been trying to find the green areas. There is more of a curiosity about what we can do to stay healthy. So there is more of an interest in that. So I'm, I'm vaguely optimistic, actually, that maybe now we can start to make a difference. But we need education campaigns so that people know what to do, what to eat and how to get those things that can make them feel better. What did you have for lunch? Just to follow? I haven't had any. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's one way. That's one way to do it. Uh, Sheena Cruikshank there, Professor of Biomedical Sciences uh, and Immunologist at Manchester University. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So, if a healthy lifestyle protects us from getting seriously ill, what about some less healthy habits? Time for your questions now. Over to Derek. Is it true that nicotine protects you from COVID-19? A little over a year ago, what's called the, the nicotine hypothesis made headlines when, when a couple of studies suggested that tobacco's best known active chemical might help to protect you from getting COVID-19. Um, the hypothesis was based on what the researchers said was a, a, a disconnect between the number of smokers coming down with the disease and the number of smokers 
that should have been coming down with the disease. Um, since then, however, there's evidence from other studies that when adjusted for other factors, smokers likely do get COVID-19 as often as non-smokers. And, and what's clear is that when they do get it, it's more likely to take a serious turn. That really shouldn't come as much of a surprise. I mean, pandemic or no pandemic, smoking is just terrible for your health and it lays the groundwork for many of the comorbidities that are associated very clearly with more severe COVID-19 outcomes. Um, there is an interesting aspect to this question, however, that's still being pursued, which is what effect nicotine might have when given to people directly rather than by having them inhale smoke from, from burning tobacco. Um, there are a couple of different studies looking at things like whether, for instance, uh, nicotine patches uh, applied to non-smoker patients in hospitals might affect the course of their COVID-19. Um, some researchers think the chemical might interfere with or, or block the receptor that the virus uses to enter cells and that it could therefore contribute maybe to a future treatment in some way. Um, but the studies I found looking into questions like that are, are pretty small scale and they haven't yet released findings. So I wouldn't count on a really convincing argument for it uh, anytime soon. Derek Williams there, and he'll be back tomorrow, of course. That's all from this edition of our COVID-19 special. Thank you so much for joining us, and do stay healthy.